So let's go ahead and look at the back. We can fit the larger mower in because the gate's jacked up here. I'll just roll right over it like it wasn't there. Pick it out of the way. So what do I have to do for this job? See, this tree's down and it's on the house. But all we're doing is picking up that limb, that limb, and cutting this down. We're not messing with this tall stuff, just the stuff on the ground. And these are little sucker trees. And we'll mow right over those. Um, we got this crazy fence line. We're not knocking any of that back. We're just weed eating it. And then we've got some tall Johnson grass over here. Whenever you weed eat Johnson grass, be careful. It's real woody. <coughs> and it, it'll twist around the weed eater string and get up in the head. And it, it can burn up your weed eater head. So just be careful there. Uh, other than that, this property is... Well, there's not a whole lot on it. Um, and I, I walked it when I went to do the bid, just taking a look at it. And so what I bid this out at? Well, this one, I said 60 bucks. And why 60 bucks? Well, because I figured you guys might want to watch them. If I was going to legitimately bid this because somebody asked me to, and it's this tall, 100 minimum. Um, the reason being is you're taking your mower through it. And you're going to tear stuff up. You're going to tear your blades up. Uh, it's just, it's just not fun. But I kind of feel like it's in the cards right now to land these odd crazy yards film them for you guys and hopefully you enjoy them and like i said i'm starting to kind of enjoy them myself so uh there are some crazy ones in in the lineup potentially so we'll see how that actually works out uh oh the other thing is with these abatement properties they're just mowing goes you slam them down you weedy you get out and uh they don't want them looking too messy but at the same time you don't have to hit the stuff in the driveway you don't have to edge it uh you don't have to make it look too clean it's just it's kind of a it is what it is cut but i'm going to edge it up with the weed eater i'm not going to put a metal blade on it and uh yeah hopefully you guys like it so let's go ahead and get into it i just want to say thank you to all of our followers who are giving us awesome success on the channel it's going to be huge it's going to be great and to all of our haters, I just want to take a moment to speak in your language and tell you thank you. Oh god, it's a mess! What's up, Juggernauts? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to cut a taller lawn. We're going to be breaking it down, really getting into detail on this one, on exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it through the process of cutting this overgrown abatement property. Now, uh, if you don't know, an abatement property is basically a property that the city has an issue with and they need it taken care of. It's overgrown and uh, it's like an abandoned property type situation. Basically, city ordinance got onto them. So, in this abatement property, we're going to get this cleaned up. But I would put this in comparison to um, bi-weeklies. When I mowed bi-weeklies, I ran into this all the time. Because what's going to happen is when you get a tall yard like this, uh, or crabgrass, or weed lawns, they want to cut every two weeks because they're kind of a budget client, then you run into a scenario where the grass might be at two weeks okay to cut, but it's still on the shaggy side, then you get rained out, and then you get rained out again, or you have a delay, or whatever it might be, and you end up at three weeks, or even longer, and you end up at a month, and so this is the type of scenario we're in. Now I do want to say uh, right here, you know, you're kind of in the situation of do I blow the grass on the neighbor's property or do I slam the side of the house? I never want to slam the side of the house. I never want to slam a, um, you know, an air conditioning unit with grass, anything like that. You always just want to keep it off of property and anywhere that it can damage. Uh, so if you get it in the neighbor's grass, it's not a, a big deal unless they have a real, real nice turf. In this case, they have crabgrass. So absolute worst, worst case scenario, when I get done with the lawn, I'm gonna blow everything back onto my side of the turf. Now, before I get into this any further, I wanna let you know that all of the tools that I use in this job, I have links in the description to let you know exactly what our setup is and what we use and what we enjoy to use. Other than like our mowers, we use uh, the Ferris 61 and then we have a 36 inch X mark that we use. I also like the uh, Toro 36 inch belt drive. I've used those in the past and I really like that as a mower uh, for doing this type of work. Now coming in here, well, we've got me messing with the camera a little bit, but I wanted to show you this. Look, there's a stone 
and this paver stone that was in the lawn and that's the type of stuff you'll run into when you mow tall stuff so you got to kind of keep an eye out for that stuff and when you're on a zero turn like I am here it's harder to see what's in front of you versus if you're on a stand on unit or if you're push mowing and with the push mower you can react pretty quick with a stand on unit you can pop the front up and you can make sure that your um, deck is clearing something like that but if you run over a brick or a paver stone or a stump on a zero turn you're kind of stuck on it and you hope that the blade shut off quick or that it just instantly kills the mower or whatever it might be you know what I'm saying it can be it can it can cause a lot of damage to a mower to run something over you're not supposed to as far as the grass here I'm gonna do the first pass um, shooting everything into the lawn we're gonna try not to blast a bunch of grass onto where we're gonna be weed eating later because it's only gonna make it difficult to weed eat right um, because you're gonna get grass built up on what you're gonna try to weed eat so you're gonna have to you're not really gonna be able to see it well but the other thing is it's gonna bog down the weed eater string as you're weed eating and then when you get done and you're blowing off and you're cleaning up the grass what you're gonna find out is that you have some stragglers here and there so again here I am coming down and you can do all this the same concept of what I'm doing whether you have a push mower or a 30 inch mower or a 32 or a 36 it doesn't really matter the size of the mower is irrelevant the mowing um, methods are pretty much the same so I'm going to do my absolute best to keep the grass out of the street that's not because of you know motorcycles and stuff like that I ride motorcycles and that argument is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard except when it's on a curve it could be dangerous but in this scenario if I were to blow grass into the street it would be underneath my truck and not somewhere that somebody would ride a motorcycle anyways but I don't want to blow it there because my truck's gonna be parked there during the job I don't want to have to move my truck and I don't want to have to deal with messing with that later so I'm actually going to blow everything towards the middle of the yard now when you are cutting tall grass you want to kind of do a pass and then blow everything outward and that way the mower is not bogging down and it's not working as hard so you wouldn't ideally want to be in a scenario where you're mowing everything inward because you're gonna it's just basically gonna work the engine on the mower twice as hard it's gonna you know everything's gonna have twice as much wear and tear when you do it that way so we're kind of going back and forth here and like I said because this is a smaller yard we want to keep it off the house we want to keep it out of the street and with so much grass that I'm cutting off I'm actually going to be hauling some away so I'm kind of doing a back and forth pattern here and we're going to double cut it uh, the, I think the first cut here uh, on the front yard I might be cutting it at like three and a quarter or something at, I think at this point though I actually kicked it up and we're at transport height which would be around five inches I think uh, I'm going to give it a one cut at transport height, which is the highest setting you can have just because it's going to cut easier. And then I'm going to lower that down and cut it the height I need to. See right there, you saw that I lowered it down. So we're going to go ahead and do an, another pass. And then I'm going to shoot everything inward so that I don't have to do a whole lot of work. We don't want to have a bunch of work at the end where I use the blower to push it into a pile or a rake it. The idea is to use your equipment so that you don't have to rake it. See the scenario where I blew some grass back up to where I'm weed eating? It wasn't a lot of grass. If it was a ton of grass, then you're running in that situation where I was talking about where it's difficult to mow. So right now I'm just doing a back and forth pass, giving it that second pass, and then we're going to shoot everything inward. Uh, there is a stump here. So instead of pointing to the street, like I said, I actually turn around, I'm going backwards to avoid shooting into the street. That's gonna save me a ton of time later. And you have to think when you're on these type of jobs, you're probably bidding it slim. You might bid it high, but generally on a bi-weekly property, you're probably gonna bid it slim because they're, they're on a tighter budget. I don't think that's the way you should do it. Personally, if you're gonna main a pr maintain a property and it's more than a one-time cut, I think it should be weekly, but that all comes down to regional differences. Maybe you're in Florida or Texas or somewhere like that. I hear it all the time that those guys in those areas mow on a bi-weekly schedule and that's a real common thing to do there. That's just not common in my area. If we're getting a lot of rain, everything's growing real well. If it's weeds, it's growing real well. If they have a nice turf, generally it's fertilized, so we're going to be weekly anyways. Um, so that's kind of, you can see the pile that I've started to get there. I'm not worried about rolling over it in the uh, driveway 
Now I didn't get the video of me dragging these limbs, but I did want to show you how I do it. Um, basically I have this rope attached to my mower and then I use this clip to quickly connect and disconnect it. Kind of like a slip knot on here and that's something you could do. But I like to use my mower to do hard work like pulling heavy limbs and stuff like that. And these limbs were fairly large. They don't look like it in the video. But like I said, this saves me. Not only does it save me time, but it saves me a lot of wear and tear on my body. If you're doing jobs like this that are overgrown and they're big cleanups, what you're going to find out is that you need to get them done quickly so you can get on to the next one to make some more money. In this case, I bid this pretty low. Um, basically so I could get it so I could do YouTube um, but you know that's just one of those things I wanted to make a video off of this uh, we don't normally take on a lot of these properties I did sign up um, not sign up but you know basically the city reached reached out to me and asked me if I would bid on the abatement properties so maybe I'll do a bunch more of these we'll just have to see now coming into the backyard we've got a lot of sucker trees we've got some uh, sticks in the yard stuff growing up through the fence and stuff like that but yeah we're gonna come in and we're gonna get it cleaned up I'm gonna mow the back in sections um, just so that I can film it easier um, I'm only using one camera here so it's a lot easier to get um, a close-up to where you can actually see what I'm doing if I am you know mowing it in sections now if I was gonna do this for just how to do it I would mow one pass where I'm shooting inward, uh, possibly two, and then the rest would be outward passes for the first pass on, um, and we're gonna we're gonna be on uh, transport height for the first pass, and then we're gonna mow everything a second pass back and forth, almost like you would stripe alone. Now uh, you can see, like I said, right here, I decided I'm gonna get off. It's real, real thick here. I hadn't walked it, and I wanna see if there's anything in here. And sure enough, I found another paver stone. You know, that's one of those things, like I said, it could cause a lot of damage and could cause a lot of money that you have to spend in, in getting your equipment fixed again. But not only that, it, it could cost you a lot in downtime. That stuff's, it, it's just a nightmare. So make sure you're walking through that stuff. And even some of these sucker trees that I'm going through are kind of thick and I'm almost using my mower as a, a brush hog. That's not ideally what you would want to do. This is like a, a soft type of tree. I don't know what type it is, but it's like a, a real soft type tree. So I wasn't too worried about it. It cut right through it, um, and then we just keep going. So you can see there's some sticks in the yard here. That's all stuff we're gonna want to pick up as well. But now that we've got that section cut, like I said, as an inward pass, then we're going back and forth. Um, and just getting it getting it kind of cleaned up uh, now you should see me drop the height yep we're gonna drop the height and I'm gonna cut it at what will be the final height that I cut the lawn at so coming in and it's getting it cleaned up so we're cutting probably right around I want to say back here about eight inches to a foot somewhere in that range it just depends on where we're at in the yard and then a lot of those trees were obviously higher again we want to keep uh, the mower from shooting too much grass to where we're going to weed eat and we don't want to blast it on the house even though this, this house is abandoned and it's boarded up and it's going to go on to a sheriff auction soon and in all honesty it's uh, probably in a situation where they're probably going to tear it down still you, you want to stay, have the same professionalism with any job that you take on so, uh, you know, and this is one of those jobs that I did. It was the first one I did for the city for these abatement properties. And, you know, it, it blew them away. They like my professionalism. They like how I, I took on the job. They like how I um, handled everything through the bidding process and sent out my emails and communicated with them. And then my actual uh, workmanship, you know, how the job came out and how quickly I was able to get it done. All that stuff comes down to uh, making you a more professional uh, service for provider in your area and then you can you know obviously get better and better nicer jobs I'm not saying that abatement properties are gonna get you a nicer job but in this scenario you know I let the woman know that is my contact um, I let her know that hey I'm taking these on but I'm hoping that it will lead to larger maintenance properties in the future so if something comes up in 
our city that might need service that's a common area I would love to be able to put an estimate in for maintenance and that's all stuff that you have to think about who knows who and you know um, what might this lead to that's greater for you in the future because every job that you do you have no idea who knows who and it could lead to something better for you so moving into this next section there used to be a shed in this corner and you can tell it burnt down so that's a little uh, a little scary there's some trash and different things there that I gotta kind of uh, keep an eye on again my mowers on the transport height we're coming in we're gonna cut this I started going through um, this Johnson grass a little bit and then I decided I did not want to do that um, I just don't know what's in there and so I'm gonna weed eat that section later now basically at this point with mowing it's uh, pretty much rinse wash and repeat with what I've already discussed uh, like I said you can do this with any size of mower 61 all the way down to a 21 it doesn't really matter the size I used to do these kind of cleanups all the time with a push mower I've done them with weed eaters it really comes down to what's uh, most suitable for the job just keep in mind that when you do these it's going to be a lot of wear and tear on your equipment and uh, you have to think about risk worth uh, risk versus reward is it worth it taking my mower through here you know in this scenario we've got the 61 can it handle it is it is it okay you know I'm, I'm confident in using my machine I've been doing this stuff for a long time uh, but you know it's one of those scenarios that if you don't have another mower it, it could really cost you a lot if something were to break down or you don't know how to fix something so be careful and make sure you charge what you need to to make a job profitable and that way you can afford repairs and, and things like that you know if you had a belt pop on a, a job like this where you're cutting through something thick and nasty uh, you know a belt might cost you anywhere from 50 bucks to 100 bucks you know I think a deck belt on this if I buy it from the uh, good old Steeler ship it'll cost me about a hundred bucks if I go to a place in town uh, it's a belt supply store a Midwest bearing is what I go to here in Tulsa but if you go to say uh, O'Reilly's or something like that you can get some some belts and put those on there and it'll cost you somewhere in the 20 to 30 dollar range now having said that if you're coming in and mowing a yard uh, once every two weeks and this is just kind of what you're dealing with is excessively high growth and you already know the yard you're not too worried about obstacles in the yard you know is there a random brick or this and that unless you have uh, maybe rental properties I noticed when I used to have a lot of rental properties uh, sometimes the tenants would throw stuff in the yard and uh, just wouldn't take care of it so you got to watch out for that stuff but for the average yard it's probably not a concern now in here there's a lot more uh, established trees there are all those little sucker trees that you see in the yard well these in the corner are more established so in this area we're not gonna cut all those down we're not gonna mow those like I said in the beginning the abatement property we can actually just mow and go on this they don't even care if we edge and stuff but you know keep keep your craftsmanship at a high level you never know who's watching you might end up getting something really nice out of it you know one of the neighbors might have a good looking property it really all depends in this scenario I don't like mowing in this neighborhood the only reason I'm mowing these abatement properties is because they're pretty close to the uh, pretty close to my house so you know I can kind of come in and get one here and there when they need it now on the other side of this tree there's a bunch of poison ivy uh, you won't see me mow that section as either so you know that's one of those situations I don't mow where we eat poison ivy and I, I do my best to identify it and not allow myself to be put in a position where I'm gonna have you know an itch from poison ivy for three or four weeks or drag it home and my daughter gets it I just don't think that's fair so for me I you know notify the clients of poison ivy being on the property and I just avoid it in this scenario we just knocked it down and uh, it wasn't a big deal and I didn't notify the client it's a one-time service unless you know nothing happens with it or it doesn't sell on the auction in which case I'll probably be back in about three or four weeks and I'm okay with that too we'll make another video man Okay, so right here, um, it has nothing to do with cutting a tall lawn, but I just kind of wanted to show 
um, my weed eater racks because I see a lot of uh, a lot of YouTubers talking about fancy weed eater racks and stuff like this. In this case, uh, my racks are something that I ordered from uh, the trailer company when I bought it. You know, I I got it with the racks on it, and then I got it with the uh, cage up front, and then my gas can rack as well. And that's been a uh, good choice for me. They work just fine. Um, they beat up my weed eater a little bit as far as scratching it and scuffing it, but I'm not care. You know, I, I don't really care about that stuff. Uh, it's not something that anybody's going to notice but me. And then as far as uh, you know, what I use to lock it, I just get padlocks from uh, Home Depot, and I buy new ones every couple of years. And then okay, so now we're coming in and we're weed eating. Uh, I kind of start. I pick one side of the yard, uh, and then I start and I work all my way all my way around. So, you know, kind of a uh, counterclockwise scenario in this situation. And the reason why I'm going clockwise is the way that the string is pushing out. It's actually kicking all the debris towards my legs, which is a downside because um, you get hit in the legs. But the upside is this: all the grass that's up against the house and everything, since it's so tall and thick you want it to shoot away from the house right here it, you can see how thick it is and how long it is and stringy and nasty because it's clogging up my head so you know when when you get string wrapped around your head on the weed eater stop pull it out get it get it untangled because if it gets wrapped in there uh, it'll overheat the uh, head on the weed eater and it can it can wear things out okay you can put a lot of damage on there. You could also bog it down and you could do some serious damage to your engine or uh, you know the shaft on it. There's, there's a lot of things that can can go wrong when you're cutting tall grass in general. Now in this situation right here where I'm uh, weeding in the cracks in the driveway and sidewalk, you're going to see me angle it so that I'm kicking everything away from me. And uh, here's another spot. Edging. Anytime you see me edging a yard with a weed eater, when I'm going towards the garage, I always point the debris for at least the first five feet away from the house because what will happen is if you have a nice house or a nice garage or whatever and you start edging and it's kicking stuff towards the house, you'll end up with a lot of uh, dirt and debris that gets stuck on the house and it just looks tacky. So I'm coming in here, I'm going to pretend that there's a door there and I'm going to edge it so that uh, I'm pushing everything away from, uh, from the door. Uh, at this point I kind of gave up with it on that little section, but yeah, I'm going to come in and I'm going to edge. The grass is pretty thick there, but the idea is to get the string to lay between um, the concrete and the turf itself. And that just makes it pretty nice and clean. Again, when I'm edging this, I want to keep, or when I'm cleaning up the cracks in the driveway, I want to kick the grass away from me. That way I'm not getting hit in the face with shrapnel like sand and stuff like that. If you uh, use a few methods like that and you're just you're careful about the way you weed eat and edge, you won't get hit in the face as much, you won't get hit in the shins as much, um, you know, it's just something that you have to learn. Now I'm edging, and this is a big plus side to edging and weeding at the same time. I can go straight from edging, flip it over, and weed eat out by the mailbox. I'm going to weed eat that obstacle, and then I'm going to flip right back to edging, and we're going to edge that next section by the truck. Um, I'm able to get in real tight spaces doing this. Um, I, I'm just, for me, as far as using a metal blade edger, I, I haven't gotten real familiar with it because I've always used a weed eater. So uh, I might make a uh, how to edge with a metal blade edger even though it seems incredibly simple, but I might make a video on tips in the future, in which case I'll have my brother um, give you some tips in that that situation because he has been using a metal blade edger a lot longer than I have now at this point even though he's only worked with me this year and he's learned quite a bit with it and uh, he is very efficient with it now and it seems like something simple but it's really not it, it really can have uh, the simplest things can have quite a bit to them and you can learn little tips that will really speed things up so now that I'm done with the edging, I'm getting the one obstacle in the front yard up here. Again, there's a grass pile there and some sticks and stuff, and then the grass in the driveway. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the rest of the uh, cracks that I can see. When I'm done with this property, I actually blew off the uh, driveway. I had a few little stragglers in the cracks, and then I cleaned those up. Now at this point, you're going to see me talk how I was talking about edging. I'm going to edge it so that I'm kicking everything away from the house there for about the first five feet. 
because if you did that and it was kicking towards say like a you know wood on a house or siding or something like that you're gonna have dirt and mud that cake onto the house and it's gonna look nasty it just leaves a bad finish and even though this is abandoned like I said you want to treat it with the same uh, respect as you would any other turf any other nice grass you want to make it look nice you know the the same level of quality of work that I would do on a really nice lawn is what I'm gonna do on here now we did leave a little bit of a mess at the end of the property but as far as the techniques and the method I'm using that so in this scenario Boy, I've probably said that a lot in this video, but in this situation, we're cutting down these trees and stuff with the weed eater. I'm only getting what the weed eater will handle. So this is a situation where it's not like, hey, how I would handle a weekly loan or a bi-weekly loan or whatever. This is an abandoned property. That stuff would be extra. That stuff would be stuff that you bust out the chainsaw and you cut it out and you're going to clear the fence line. That's cleanup stuff and not so much knocking down the grass. So you have to... Uh, uh, you know have delineation in your service on what is actually cleanup type work and what is getting the lawn back to uh, looking good in this situation on the bid and I, I can show you a copy of the bid it's just mowing uh, the property and uh, cleaning up the two limbs that were in the back and then I cleaned up some sticks that were extra they were just stragglers because I know I might be back here who knows what's gonna happen or whatever but I went ahead and got it out of the way so we're coming in along the side of the house. We're getting to this kind of uh, thin area that I was talking about with the poison ivy. So I'm kind of being careful and I'm making sure that when I do see some poison ivy, I'm either skipping it or I'm kicking it away from myself. Uh, if it's real thin, I'll, I'll just kick it away from myself, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm bringing the weed eater back and then shooting everything away. So not actually uh, taking a stroke in the back direction where it would kick grass to me. Only discharging the grass away from me which is still risky you can have some come back at you but you know it just kind of is what it is you got to be careful and uh, for me I, I don't want to risk getting poison ivy at all we're running into some of the thicker um, sucker trees again around here that's not that big of a deal uh, we're using um, I, I don't know what type of string I have I think it's 0.995 on the uh, on the thickness but it does a pretty good job this particular string is uh, something that my father gave me he got it from uh, Husqvarna he works there and they gave me some string to test out and see what I like on it or you know see how I like it and whether it's something that I want to use in the future so really cool there I get to kind of demo that and see how I like it and I'll let you guys know in the future whether I do or not to me string string but I will say uh, this stuff seems to handle pretty uh, pretty well compared to my other stuff when it comes through thick and nasty type weed eating we're not uh, loading the string as often and I'm abusing it like crazy so this is the area I was talking about earlier where the shed is uh, where it was and it's burnt and you can tell they took it out of there but there's just the only reason I can tell it's burnt is like there's a, a, a little tree that was burnt out and there's some trash and stuff and uh, so I don't know what happened. Maybe lightning struck it. Maybe uh, there were tweakers here and they had a meth lab in the back. Who knows? I don't know. It's abandoned. All right, we're getting to that crazy Johnson grass here. Coming in and cleaning it up. I'm hitting it from the top, going towards the bottom, and just uh, clearing it out as we go. I end up running out of string um, right about uh, sometime in here. I run out of string, and I have to do the walk of shame and go back to my truck to get string. It seems like every time you run out of string, you're in the very back corner of a property. Uh, but if you keep some string in your pocket, you can avoid that. Uh, I'm out of practice. James has been doing most of the weed eating this year. Yep, so you just drop it. I'm not easy on my equipment. It's there to work. It's not there to be babied. Anyways, we're gonna fill this string back up. I'm using the speed feed head. Uh, you know it's echo speed feed head you just run the string through there and then it has a ratcheting mechanism to load it back up it's like one of the best ways that you can use a string trimmer it allows you to load string super fast for like the first year I had a speed feed head I had no idea that's how you loaded it I actually took it apart every time and loaded the string every time but yeah you only have to run it through there and then you can ratchet it up anyways going uh, going forward 
I'm using the uh, chain link there to get my string to the proper length, by the way, so that it's even. Uh, I normally use concrete or whatever and I'll run my string on there since I don't run guards on my weed eater. And the reason I don't run guards is for jobs like this or when I have to weed eat large sections uh, with the weed eater, like mow large sections with the weed eater, I don't want to have to deal with that. I'm going to use the weed eater now to clean up this fence line. I'm just going to go up and down and uh, work my way down the fence line. Again, this isn't clearing out the fence. It's not making it look immaculate. It's just knocking a lot of this down. And we're not going to clean up those leaves and everything that I cut off either. That's going to be fine. Uh, they love the work on this. Uh, but if I was going to do this, say it was like cleaning up a lawn for the first time and we're going to be mowing it again, that's something that I would have cleaned up. I would have taken the time to go ahead and polish that up. But, you know, this looks pretty good at this point. Alright, now the back looks good. I'm going to leave it just like this, except I'm going to pick up that pile of stuff. And, uh, let's go take a look up here, right? Up here, it's pretty tall, pretty nasty. I'm going to go ahead and tarp this up and haul it away. I almost never do that with grass, but I'm going to go ahead and do it here. And then this, I got to cut up with the chainsaw. I'll back up a few feet, put that in my box. Tarp that up, put it in the box. I'll put the sticks in the box as well. So... That's it, let's go ahead and get to it. This is me, mid job. Uh, get some electrolytes from my spit there. Suck it out of the stash. Get some germs. Maybe some coronavirus from earlier today. <laughs> it's whatever, right? Okay, so I mentioned that I mowed this property for $60. Uh, and when I put the uh, abatement bid in, Here's where I messed up. It's not mowing the lawn, although I could make much better money mowing a lawn. My average weekly lawn is $50, and I'm in and out in about 15 minutes. So when you're mowing these tall lawns, uh, just know that they're going to be kind of at a lower price than your premium for mowing a nice lawn. You can make good money, but most of the time you're bidding it slim because you're bidding against other people, or you know, just in general, it's normally going to be a cheaper budget type cut person or a bi-weekly bi yard and it's a budget type person that, that I might have some arguments or uh, whatever in there if you want to say something in the comments that's totally cool but here's where I messed up on the bid for sure I didn't really account for these limbs being so large I just kind of glanced at them I didn't actually go look at them and see the size of them I just thought they were some smaller smaller limbs and I thought eh, that'll fit in the box real easy no big deal I didn't even think I'd have to bust out a chainsaw I just thought it was like two quick limbs so I screwed up there, uh, and then also, like I said, one of the other reasons why we're only cutting it for 60 bucks is just so that we can have this video for you, and we can do stuff like this. I've got plenty of time in my schedule right now with the whole COVID thing, and, uh, you know, things are kind of a little bit slower, but we've got, we've got a good mowing route, don't get me wrong there, but there's always time for more work. There's always time to do more, you know what I mean? And, uh... I enjoy working, I enjoy making videos, and I want content. And for me, it's a sacrifice, it's kind of a uh, trade, look at me trying to throw that in, it's a trade to do this work at a cheaper price so that I can have properties like this to take care of and uh, show you guys. It's not something that um, you know I'm trying to pay my bills with anymore. I do want to make enough money that in case something happens, you know, I can take care of it. Um, you know, if I need to, you know, just make sure the expenses for the job in general are paid for. So if you were trying to make 60 bucks per man hour, we made it on this job. You know, it took me, I want to say, right around uh, 45 minutes to an hour to knock out this property. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but it was a decent sized property. So now we're going to come in, we're going to clean up the grass on this. I hate cleaning up grass like this, you know, tarping it up and dragging it away. And the main reason, um, well, I don't bag, but, you know, the main reason I don't bag and stuff is because of the smell. You know, the next day when you get to the dump, it just, it stinks so bad. Anyways, we're going to rake it up. On the concrete, it's easy to rake up. In the grass, it's not as easy, but, you know, I'll rake it up onto the concrete, and then we're going to kick it on the tarp. Again, over here in the lawn, we're going to kick it on the tarp, and then I'm going to uh, get the rest of it on the concrete onto the tarp same same method in all the different areas and then we're going to load that up into the truck and trailer haul it away 
and then we're gonna blow off the property now uh, since you don't get to see me blowing off the property what I did here on the final last little bit was actually blew out the grass real well and I blew out the concrete real well and I went all the way around the house and just made sure I didn't have any build up just like I would any other one uh, so this video is kind of concluding I just want to say hey thank you for taking the time to watch the video give it a thumbs up if you liked it if it helps let me know if you have some other tips or tricks drop those in the comments I like reading them I like seeing how you guys do stuff and uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel please feel free to subscribe and uh, check out our other videos as well I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one